Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm making my predictions for the 2024 edition of the Royal Rumble. We'll start things off with our first of two Royal Rumble matches, this one being the Women's Royal Rumble. For this year for both Rumbles, it seems like there's two favorites for both Rumbles that are far and away the choices that everyone's been making, more than it's been in recent years where it's just between these two people in the Women's and these two people in the Men's. For the Women's Royal Rumble, the overwhelming two favorites are Bailey and Becky Lynch to walk out with the win. For me in picking the winner, I think they should go with the winners that make the most logical sense and it makes the path the easiest road, I think, to where it's not some you know, jump through seven loops to get to why they got their title shot. And for me in this woman's rumble, out of the two favorites, I think they are the only two choices to really walk out with the win. And I think the most logical and the one that makes the most sense here is for Becky Lynch to win the Royal Rumble. It's pretty clear that Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley will go at it at some point. And to me, the most sense makes it for me to happen at WrestleMania. And I think with Becky winning the Rumble, this will then push off to have Rhea have a match more likely with Nia Jax in her homeland of Australia, where she'll win there, and then head on to face the man at the Showcase of the Immortals. And for Bailey, I could see something later down the road happening to where she screws up something, Damn it, Control has enough, they jump her, turn on her, bang, bang, boom. That's how we get to our WrestleMania match. Either they just say, I'm coming for you now, or there's some kind of multi-person match maybe at Elimination Chamber to where it's Bailey and someone else from Damage Control in the chamber as one of the six participants to where it comes down to them two and Bailey goes in for herself and wins that and she overcomes the odds and beats Damage Control and maybe becomes the WWE Women's Champion at WrestleMania. I just think these results give us the most things that'll happen on the road to WrestleMania in these two women's divisions. I think this is the way that WWE should go on Saturday night. So now on to match number two. And that'll be for the WWE United States Championship where Logan Paul is putting his title on the line against Kevin Owens. In this match, I believe Kevin Owens will overcome his hand injury and the onslaught by Logan Paul to become the new United States Champion here. I just see the title being taken off of Logan Paul. He's had the title since Crown Jewel back in November and he did his whole parade tour around with it where it was on his podcast. He was going to sell it at a pawn shop or something. He's shown it around all over social media and all this stuff. So where now I see Kevin Owens being the guy to take it off of him and send Logan Paul on his way to be either probably have another boxing match or set up another match for WrestleMania for him. With Owens becoming the US Champion, I could see the return of the mid-card last match where Owens will defend the U.S. title in a multi-man ladder match on one of the nights of WrestleMania. If we just look at who could be in the mix for the U.S. title on SmackDown to go after Kevin Owens to be potentially in this match, I don't know what AJ Styles could be doing at WrestleMania, but he's definitely someone I could see being in that match. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, they look like they're getting more and more annoyed with each other as the weeks go on. They implode and go at it in this ladder match and do some crazy stuff. Maybe Bobby Lashley pops over into the U.S. title mix. Cameron Grimes has a history with Kevin Owens, maybe they that he gets in there. Dragon Lee, he was part of the LWO stuff, and him Ray was the US champ. He could get in on there. Santos Escobar, also part of that. He can also hop into this match. LA Knight, who knows what he's gonna be doing. Maybe if The Rock isn't in the main event, he can tag with him since it seems LA Knight's kind of been the uh superstar guys tag team partner in training kind of thing for a little bit now. Maybe he gets put into this ladder match for the US title, or possibly a returning shape. Sheamus could cap off this U.S. title feud and this whole mix, this huge ladder match could be happening in Philadelphia. But all I know is they'll be going for Kevin Owens' U.S. championship because I believe he'll be winning here at the Royal Rumble. So now on to our co-main event, a fatal four-way for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship where Roman Reigns is putting his title on the line against LA Knight, Randy Orton, and AJ Styles. No crazy prediction for me here as I've been saying since he somehow won against Cody last year at WrestleMania, Roman Reigns will not be losing the title until Philadelphia at the earliest, and I believe he'll be winning in this Fatal 4-Way match. As we saw in the past in Roman with multi-man matches, where it was him against Edge and Daniel Bryan in WrestleMania 37, he just stacked him up and pinned him, and I don't think we'll be seeing a stack of three people here as Roman wins, but also, it's a Fatal 4-Way, like, there's no rules, so this just plays into the bloodline's hand, and Roman probably is just going to pull some shenanigans and wins but i think he'll be keeping the title and moving on to wrestlemania come april in philadelphia and may like there's just a small chance like he loses here and randy orton wins but like i 
It just seems like an anticlimactic ending if Roman loses in this four-way. I just think when Roman drops the title, it should be to one guy at the biggest stage possible, and that guy's supplanted as the new guy, and then he goes and runs with the belt. And I think that should have probably been last year at WrestleMania, but we're already here. The only reason I have that small thought that Roman could lose here is this rock match that might happen, which I don't believe that guy's showing up until the day of the show anyway, so that's where I'm at with it. But I just don't think Roman Reigns will be losing his championship at the Royal Rumble and I think he'll move on to his next match which will happen in, in three months at Wrestlemania in April where he'll put his title on the line potentially against the winner of the Royal Rumble and that is our main event our last match of the evening here the men's Royal Rumble match and this will also be the hype video short for the evening where we'll focus on the two favorites and the uh, like I said in the women's one the two favorites that everyone's picking we will focus on CM Punk and Cody Rhodes which one will be winning and that'll be up at 9 a.m. tomorrow so in this match I do see it coming down to Cody and Punk and again just like in the women's one what do I think makes the most logical sense to do here and for me that is for Cody Rhodes to go back to back and win the Royal Rumble again if we just look at this Cody is target is Roman Reigns I don't need to see this guy facing Randy Orton or Damian Priest for a briefcase like he needs to finish the story at this point this was like his calling card if he doesn't finish it soon this is going to turn into a meme and that rubber chicken is going to be the mascot and I think this also just that there's not a lot of hoops to jump through to set up Roman versus Cody again here. Cody wins the Rumble. Roman, you got me last year. I'm not falling for your nonsense this year. I'm coming for you again and I'm going to beat you at WrestleMania. It's not hard. Punk wins. You have him. He's going for Rollins. We know this. It's been pretty much thrown at us and we know it's coming. If Punk wins, he says, okay, Seth Rollins, I'm fighting you. Okay, pal. We know. What's Cody going to do? Go in this elimination chamber to get it? Like what? He's on the other show. Why? Why would SmackDown approve that he doesn't work there as much as we pretend to uh not adhere to these brand split things in storyline sense where does it make to where cody's coming over and he's gonna take our title and oh shit he's going to the other show why do we do that or what kind of crazy trade would have to happen for cody to go over to smackdown for him to be put into that chamber to where it would make sense and as i kind of just blurted out with the roman win i do not believe the rock is having a match until the day of the show and we're like hey the rock Rock's here. We know he's in the building because this just feels like a never-ending story for him to where it's like the Rock's going to have his match against Roman. We've been hearing this for like, it feels like the past 10 WrestleManias. I'll believe it when I see it. And this is brought jogged a memory in my brain. People, when they sent out the email for when I went to Extreme Rules or what was supposed to be payback with Extreme Rules in 2016, they said WWE returns to the uh, with the Rock. That's the name, the nickname for the arena, the Prudential Center. People thought the Rock was showing up to face Roman for the title then when it was like AJ might be hurt he might not be able to go like it that was 2016 it is 2024 that's eight years and there's also a part of me that thinks in this new era of Triple H it's where the guys who've carried the company for the whole year are going to someone is at least going to get rewarded with the main event of Wrestlemania who's been here the whole time and if we see Punk's going to probably be facing Rollins is one of the bigger matches maybe the main event of one of the nights I get Rock Roman is the biggest match they could probably do right now in in the grander scope of people who watch WWE like it's F1 to where it's like, hey, the cool thing right now. But for the people who are here every week, Cody's the guy. And I think that'd be a better reward and show, hey, to other people, maybe people who work other places or people who are coming up to where if you're here and you put it in and you work through it and carry things, you're going to be rewarded in the end. And I think the reward is for Cody to win the Royal Rumble and hopefully, finally, finish the story come April in Philadelphia. So that'll do it for my predictions and my rant about the 2024 Royal Rumble. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below what you think is going to be happening here and what you could potentially see as the predicted card for WrestleMania for both nights. Also, 49ers franchise shorts, they'll be coming up. They're all set for three or four to come out every day up till like February 5th right now. Also, like I said, for the Rumble, that short hype video will be coming out tomorrow at 9 a.m. featuring Cody and Punk. This is how they've mixed in and what led to them being the two favorites of this rumble match also if you like this video hit the like button if you like what i'm doing on this channel and any of those other videos interest you hit the subscribe button and as always thanks for watching